Well, it's another stunning day down at the beach, except it's a bit windy and yeah, the sound will suck. And there wasn't any kelp today. And my hair's too long. Can't keep it in the right place. But it's real and it's honest and it's me and that's all that counts. What I was thinking today, despite being a stunning day down here, was that jigsaw puzzles are really much easier to do when you know what the final picture is going to look like. If you're doing a jigsaw puzzle and it's of a horse, you have no idea it's a horse, it's pretty hard to put it together. But if you know it's a horse and you pick up a piece, looks a bit like uh, hair on a tail, you know which end to put the uh, the piece of the jigsaw puzzle together. And I've just spent uh, a couple of weeks writing two articles on my Patreon page. But what I think the big picture is of what's going on in the world today. And I think they're pretty extraordinary articles. And I think if you don't, if you haven't heard of the two opium wars in the 1800s and the, it's like a big stingray out there. If you don't know about the unfair treaties and the I speak for the kelp. Woo! Hang on, no kelp! Third time. Hang on, hang on, hang on. If you don't oh, is it a stick for me? It might just be a big one. Woo! If you don't understand about the Oh, it's a bunch of fish! That's so weird. So, so I got distracted and wet. If you don't know about the opium wars and the unfair treaties and the century of humiliation and what caused the Great Depression of the 1920s and the subsequent Smoot-Hawley Act and then what happened after World War II with the Weimar currency and what happened the significance of President Nixon taking the US off the gold standard in the 1970s and how that relates to the virus in March and then the US Federal Reserve saying they'll do unlimited printing of money. If you don't understand the significance of all that, how it fits into the, how it makes up the jigsaw puzzle, then those two articles are for you because the only solution out of this problem is self-sovereignty, which is taking responsibility for our own health, our own lives, our own finances. And one of the ways that we take responsibility for our own health is by understanding the concept of senescence. And senescence is basically the concept that our individual cells die in our organs. And when they die, there's a cleanup gang which uh, comes along and disposes of the garbage. And it's a bit like if that system doesn't work, if you don't have the right infrastructure to remove the garbage, then those cells just sort of sit there, break down and release their toxic decay products, which affects the functioning of the surrounding cells. It's a bit like if your neighbor doesn't have a garbage collection and the garbage just collects up and then all the cockroaches and ratches rats from their property come over and start uh, invading your property. So you want to really good, have a good system of senescence and our body uses what's called senolytics which are nutrients from plants which are basically the garbage disposal unit for the cells which die and then help replace those cells with new cells as we turn over. And the three main senolytics uh, theoflavin, quercetin, and apigenin. The apigenin I get from celery juice. I think celery juice is 
pretty amazing substance and now we know it's part of the senolytic process. I get the quercetin from pomegranate juice or grape juice, but pomegranate juice is my favorite, but I try and keep it seasonal. And the theoflavins I get from green tea. So those are the three foods I try, and three or four foods I try and include in my diet regularly to make sure I'm getting the senolytics to keep the turnover of my cells and my organs really healthy. So that's one of the ways that I take responsibility for my health. Also understanding what I talked about with the, the financial system allows me to take personal responsibility for my finances. How do you do that? Well, you understand the things that can't be taken from you. Things like silver, things like cryptocurrencies, things like family, community, growing our own food, love, hope, faith. Those are things that can never be taken from us. So I'm keeping responsibility in my health with understanding the senolytics, keeping responsibility for my finances by understanding what can't be taken from me. One of the things that I really liked about using tea in my life is remembering a scene from one of my favorite movies, which is The Last Samurai. And I really love that scene where they're talking about how the Japanese have this devotion to perfection and ceremony. And there's a lovely scene where they're doing the green tea ceremony in the movie. And I think I've learned a lot about that, about how that applies to our health. Now we know that science is just proving what an amazing substance is, tea is, particularly green tea, with the senolytics. And we also know, interestingly, that tea was a big part of the opium wars, if you read about those, which I think are very relevant and fit in with the jigsaw puzzle that I've been talking about but also in terms of taking responsibility for the health. And that's very important around the concept of eating. So some of the things that I've been incorporating into the way I eat is that's, that's now based both in traditional health systems and also science is now validating, which is what my passion is, what my mission is, is to use science to show how a lot of the traditional health systems are now being validated and how we can use that knowledge to incorporate that into our self-sovereignty by taking responsibility of our financial and physical, mental, spiritual health. But one of the things I like incorporating my meals is that concept of ceremony. And what I've been doing is that I've been making sure that where I eat is now a sacred space. There's no mess, there's no distraction. I don't have my phone with me, I don't have the TV on. I have nothing on that the meals become much more ceremonial and much more sacred and the environment is the same as sacred and I have my biggest meal at lunch when my digestive system is the strongest and I only eat till I'm about 80% full and that I have a lot of gratitude when I eat and I stop before I eat which is a traditional part of Ayurvedic medicine and a lot of uh, traditional health systems where you don't rush the meal, eat much more slowly and part of that is by grab giving gratitude at the start and I always remember that great scene at the start of Last of the Mohicans where, where they were hunting the deer and when they killed the deer, they sacrificed the deer, they still spent some time having great gratitude for the sacrifice of, of the animal. So I'm trying to include ceremony and sacredness and peace and gratitude into my meals now rather than just kind of eating them as quickly as I as I can. So that's kind of what I've been thinking about today. I've been thinking about the jigsaw puzzle. I've been thinking about senescence, thinking about incorporating pomegranate, grapes and tea into my life. I've been thinking about love and family and community and self-sovereignty. And I've been thinking about making meals much more sacred and ceremonial to, as part of my program of self-sovereignty. So, kept walking down the beach and still no kelp. Found a, a strange school of fish, but no kelp. But I'll be back tomorrow looking for some more kelp to sun dry to use in the products I'm making. So, have a great afternoon, everybody. It's been great catching up.